This show really does never run down. But anyway, here's something else that many people noticed from this same game last night. In the third quarter, including me, by the way, Steph hits a three, putting the Warriors up seven, and then gives a little dap to the Pelicans' assistant coach, Darren Ehrman. Now, we'll uh, spot shot of this. There you go. Yep, Mm -hmm. right there. Now, Steph knows Ehrman well. He used to be an assistant coach with the Warriors for three years. And after the game, Steph did explain... While I'm shooting, he's yelling out, if he makes it, it's a good shot. If he makes it, it's a good shot. I'm trying to encourage their defense. So I wanted to you know a little praise for that good shot I made. I mean, I know why Steph wanted to do it. Are you cool with the guy on the Pelicans bench, the assistant coach doing it? Nah. Not, not, okay, a, not right? if I'm a player on the team. Not when this guy's dropping 30 on us. And we're losing. I'm not cool with that. I'm going to defend Darren Ehrman here and say that he didn't know how to react. He was caught up in the moment. Look, assistant coaches get starstruck too. Steph, if Steph Curry sticks his hand out he to was slap with- it, if Steph Curry sticks his hand out to slap it, most mortals are going to go, yes. Yeah, but this is not an assistant coach. This is not an assistant coach that, you know, hasn't been around Steph every day for a season. I mean, he was with the Warriors. Three years. So he shouldn't, yeah, he shouldn't be starstruck. He knows Steph. He shouldn't be, but I'm going to say in this instance, he didn't even realize what he was doing. If I'm after the day, how do you not realize that he's on the other team? That we're in different colors. I got it's some words for him when I, I go to the locker room. Somebody told me that. That's the thing. If you're on, if you were Seriously. on the Pelicans, right? It, yeah, he has to see me. Like, <laughs> you can't be doing that, bro. <laughs> right, we have to move on to the topic that keeps giving in the All NBA. Right. I and learned Tracy, my lesson. Yeah, first of all, don't mess with Tracy. You should know that. But, Tracy, here you go. It is teed up for you. If Grizzlies fans want to see the big three of LeBron, Kyrie, and Kevin Love, they will have to get on a plane to do it. They will not even be on the bench tonight. Cavs' Ty Lue said they did not travel to Memphis. Now, I do want to point out, this is the back-to-back of a home-and-home with Memphis. And Memphis did rest Mark Gasol last night in Cleveland. So this is a little bit turnabout is fair play. Here is what LeBron had to say about it when he was questioned. My coach wanted to rest us. I'm not going to buck at my coach, you know, and that's what he want, and uh, that's what we're going to do. I've been in this league 14 years. I shouldn't have to explain me sitting out games or not playing games. I've played in every arena, including uh, Seattle that's no longer here, uh, including some other places. So, uh, you know, it's not like it's my first year. I think we ran that just because of the hat, by the he's, way. He's played 14 years. The other guys haven't put in 10 years yet. I don't understand that. This this is my own problem. Now, LeBron, he's off the hook. Yes, he's been in the finals, what, six, seven straight years. So he's off the hook. I don't mind him. But the other two guys, look, when, when Memphis Grizzlies are marketing their tickets, trying to get their season ticket holders and if people to buy tickets, you best believe the defending champs is one of those games that everybody wants to see. LeBron James, Kevin Love, and Kyrie Irving. So for them to be in the Eastern Conference, Memphis Grizzly being in the West, they only come there once a year. So it's some fans out there that was looking forward to seeing these guys play, and they're not going to play. Precedent's been set, though. It's not going to change. Adam well, Silver's been asked about this. It might change well, because we reported Well, we reported a week or two ago that the, the league is going to move the season opener up starting next season. It's going to move up a week to 10 days. That's going to create a little extra wiggle room in the schedule, but there's still going to be patches where there are home and homes or tough travel. And Adam Silver has said, I don't feel comfortable telling teams how you manage rest. In a perfect world, all the rest would be in home games and guys would never rest in road games. But if the, the league's not going to tell coaches they have to do that. So I, I we're, we're still going to see this on occasion. On the flip side of that, hell, if I was had a coach like that resting me throughout the year, I'd probably yeah, still be still playing, playing, guys. Playing, you got to pop too late. Would you wear that hat? It was okay on LeBron. He could get away with it. He can get away you with it. You that good? I don't know. Uh, who's going to tell us could get away with that hat, I'm just saying. Welcome back to The Jump. Presented by Doers. Turn, no foul, and here comes Minnesota. The Bulls have the foul now, and they do. I think they actually just threw Dwayne Wade. Did he just get injected? I think he did, and he knew it too. You are right, Doris. He knew it immediately, and he goes straight to the locker room. He knew it, whatever it was that transpired a moment ago with Ben Taylor, one of the youngest officials in the league at 31 years of age. Wade knew he was going to be done. 
that's what do you think was it justified on d wade's Listen, part man, it all fell apart for them i was <laughs> losing to them right <laughs> i would have got thrown out at the end too <laughs> sour i mean look they gave up a 21 point lead he right? got his money's worth if he takes a walk like that he knows he got his <laughs> he money's knows, worth. right and you know with the official too they pointed out in the broadcast one of the youngest guys in the league trying to set the precedent to other guys around the league you cannot do that in my face and curse me out the way that Dwayne just did. So that is a little bit about what's going on there, too. But let's talk about the team on the other side, Timber Bucks. The Young Wolves, 21-point comeback on the Bulls last night. That is the largest comeback of the season thus far of anyone, anywhere. So props to them. Zach Levine, 24 points in 43 minutes. And the whole team, right, just looked like they really wanted to win for tips. And Tracy, you talked to Carl Anthony Towns about it after the game. Call this T Mac. Great win, big fella. Hey, T- T- tell tell me the man. importance of getting this win for Tibbs being back in Chicago. I mean, it was real important. Uh, to me personally, it was. You know, I didn't shoot the ball well tonight, and you know, I just felt every time I missed a shot, you know, that uh, I was letting Tibbs down. You know, but I just tried to pick it up on the other end. You know, when you're not hitting shots, there's a lot more ways to be just as effective, and I just tried to bring a lot of energy all around. I told Tibbs in the fourth quarter, you know. Uh, I'm going to bring this home for you. So we, I'm just glad that I was able to come with you on my work. That was so sweet, right? I mean, yeah. they clearly meant something to him. Well, first of all, I loved how his face lit up. And said, T-Mag. <laughs> we never get reactions like that. I know, that we, never, we never do. It's just like, oh, Rachel, hey, hey. But um, they, they, that was a great question because we had that talking on the show yesterday right. that this hadn't quite gelled between the coach and these young players. But last night you saw it. And uh, we talked about what the what Tibbs bought to the Bulls when he was coaching that team. Right, their identity. They were a tough, greedy team. Um, this is what I expected to see out of Minnesota when Tibbs was, you know, named the head coach with this young group of uh, talent. Uh, you have three guys on this team averaging over twenty points, and I expected to see the grit and the tenacity out of these guys because that's what Tibbs bring. They showed that last night. Now, will this be a catapult to something, you know, greater for them? We have to find out. Well, if your theory's right and Towns sound after the game backs it up that they really were playing for tips. It's a great sign because I think this has been a really tough first 25 games for both sides. These are young kids. We know young does not win in this league. These guys have never been coached as hard right. as Tibbs is going to coach these guys. But then for Thibodeau, it's an adjustment too, because in, in Chicago, he had vets. Mm-hmm. He And this is a, a team full of kids who are going to take yeah, time to learn his way. So talk to them they look they looked connected last night, yes. and that's a great sign. Yes. Right, so we could see this could be the beginning of something. Sometimes you need to get a little angry to make it all work. Who knows? There were actually a lot of good games that last night, not just that one. Nick's Suns went into overtime, but I got to tell you, the moment that got all the attention. I love it. This dust up. I love this it. This Porzingis, Marquise Chris. And look, Porzingis gets pushed down and then retaliated I by Conan it. shoving the Suns rookie. This angle is amazing, by the way, right? Boom! They both yeah, got young fella. teed up. After the game, Melo had some words of praise. I wasn't surprised. He, he, he needed it. He needed to, you know, get that. Sometimes if people try to take advantage of his of his kindness. I've never seen him get that angry. So for him to kind of get to that point, you know, obviously something was going on. I Wait, love it. Grace. Right? Yeah. I mean, this this guy has game. 7-3, he has game. And uh, the young fella tried it. So I wanted to see him retaliate. They're going to push him around and test him. Look, you're a man first. Don't let nobody punk you out on the basketball court. <laughs> this is a good you, tech like, take, right? This is a good sure. thing you can I'm not mad at him for this. Well, don't, don't let nobody push you around. Get up and retaliate. The only thing I don't like is that it kind of has that he's European, so he's soft, and he's got to prove himself undertones. And, and that just I don't like only because... This guy, since the minute he got to New York, has done everything right. This is basketball. Yeah. He's handled. Well, I was going to say, I don't this think it's a European thing. I no. think he's a young guy in the league, and he's got to prove himself. Look, listen, I'm not so sure. That's a sign of respect, right there. That's what that is. I respect <laughs> you, I'm, but I, I'm going to test you and see, you know, right. what type of man you are. Right. Well, I mean, look, this wasn't the first time, right, that we've seen the Suns and the Knicks dust up. We've got some good old video oh, here. Oh, Doc you know we're gonna Rivers. We're going to this out if we get an excuse to Doc Rivers and KJ. <laughs> <laughs> Look, KJ, you can't be running now. That's a different league. That is bench. a different league. You, you just see the the, the, the speed at which those guys were confronting Anthony each other. This, was, this would not happen. Charles this would Barber. not happen not today. Happen today. But it's fun to show. Come on. And today, Look, listen, if, last if, night. Look, oh, I, man, our, our fans will love that today. <laughs> 
Tracy's all wistful. Rick gets his cup up. He's like ready that. to have Ravens a cup will be sky high. They'll be tuned in just right? to see a fight. You'd come back if they did. If that was how it was. I love it. Then he would come back. We have to take a quick break. We got a lot more to come. But first, here's our distant replay. This date in 2004. We got a little surprise for you, Jason. Check it out. Feeds Richardson. Robinson gets it off him. Left it short. Richardson. Oh. Oh, son Plus. Bradley, man. Oh, yeah, you didn't goodness. say that when you did it. Oh. See that play over I was there when Tracy did it. Oh, I was there for that one. This happened a lot in the early 2000s. That, that actually was the same year, I think. <laughs> Stan Van Gundy, when asked about the Pistons having a stretch of winnable games coming up, but after losing to the Sixers, said, we are capable of beating anybody. We are capable of losing to anybody. <laughs> Basically he's saying, guys, we're not that good. No matter who we play against, we can't take them lightly. That's exactly what he's saying. Well, they lost to the Sixers, though. Right. So. I don't ever want to be a beat writer again, but if I do, I want to cover Stan Van Gundy. Right? <laughs> be Every day, just fills it up. Soak in the Stan he Van Gundy-ness of it all. And that's a shot at the Sixers, too, I mean. It's a the, shot at the Sixers. It's a little bit of a you shot. You can say that about every guys, team in the right? league, though, except Cleveland and Golden State. Everybody can beat everybody. What do you think it's like playing for a coach who says stuff like this, though? I think he's just trying to motivate us and, and have us understand that, again, we can't take, no matter who we play, right. we can't take them like because right. we're not that good. Right. So these quote idea of winnable games from the media right. when we all come up and say, oh, you've got winnable games. So you uh, paid attention to what uh, coaches said in the paper. Just sort of? I did, especially Jeff Van Gundy. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Good, got it. There you go. It's time for Make or Miss. <laughs> Those fan candy bros cannot ignore them. <laughs> Make emojis. The Hawks tweeted a season recap after last night with emojis representing all of their wins and losses this season. Yeah, I don't know how closely you can see that, but there's not as many smiley faces as one would like. They're 3-11 mm. and 11 in their last 14. Mm. <laughs> Tracy's doing the human version. Mark, what is going on with this team? Well, Schroeder and Bazemore, I would have to say not living up to their new contracts. I think Kyle Korver well, is missing Jeff in the league, T. Not <laughs> if the Hawks were as cohesive as their social media team, because they're really good they're on social really media, good they on would be. Media, uh, although they apparently need Tracy to do the faces yeah. for them, they would be good. Miss Booksmart, take a listen to this. Carl Malone was one of the most dominant at this two word position. Amy. What is point guard? Nope. <laughs> Tim or Bridget? <laughs> he was a great power forward. <laughs> Oh I man, can't. that's a I big just, point guard I can't, there. Right? <laughs> My but those people are smarter. Than us. Can we really point guard? Can we really take shots? Because no. they're probably smarter. Have you seen what Carl Malone looks like? Even if you don't know basketball, you can't really just say. Pff. I don't know. All right, May, we move on. May practice. Buddy Hield shared stories of his workout with Kobe Bryant, including that Kobe made him practice the same move 100 times mm. in a row. Tracy, how do you feel about this? You have worked out with Kobe Bryant. Well, maybe he needs to do 150 or 200 times because I haven't seen it. <laughs> Oh. I don't know. I'm, I'm just He's saying, young. I haven't seen it yet. He is young. Give him a little bit. He's playing on that team. you got to give him a little room to go. But you've practiced with Kobe, right? He's intense. He is. Very intense. Right. How old were you? Uh, 34, 35. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, he oh, can yeah. handle it a little bit better, right. a little bit differently. Miss retirement planning. Dirk Nowitzki told a German magazine that he wants to play until 2018, but would retire after the season if, quote, things don't go so well and it hurts everywhere. Mark, as the world's Dirk Nowitzki reporter, how do you feel about this? I Look, he's been saying this for a while now. If the body doesn't let him play, he's going to have a decision to make. And right to. now, it's not letting him. It's this Achilles thing won't go away. But he wants to play 20 years even. He wants to play next season. I think we'll see. All right. Make throwback jams. Tracy, this is you this jamming is? out oh, to hey. Ice Ice Baby uh, on right. the NBA Countdown set last night. Yeah. So what do we think? Because my is, DJ is, last night, I'm not going to say no names, but that's what I was stuck with. I was like, baby, so I had to make the best of it. I'm going to be off the show for a while, <laughs> so I had to leave him with that. Mark, does Tracy like Ice Ice Baby too much or way too much? No, I, was, I mean, you know what? We want our athletes to be real. He is so real in this clip. It's not real. Real I, sad. I pre- no, I, no, I he, appreciate real, it, Mark. Real that's, sad. That's, that's the real. That's, Nobody needs to see that. There are children who watch no. that show. That was that was Can scary. Oh, by the way, Candace Parker. Wow.